Atlanta Bird Gang, what's up? What's happening? What's going on, man? It's your boy Toddy back with another video. Back with another video. Hey, before we get started, I'm gonna ask y'all nicely hit that like button for your dog. Yes, you, yeah, you, yeah, you too. Hit that like button for your dog, man. We on the 1,000 subscriber grind, man. So I really need y'all help. I need y'all to hit that like button for me, man. It helps the channel grow. Helps the video get off to, to a, a, a more broader audience. Um, so really do your boy a real big solid hit that like button for your dog, man. Please, pretty please, pretty please. <laughs> but now let's get to the business, man. Let's get straight to the business. Caleb McGarry, man. Caleb McGarry, hey man, let, let's start out with some full disclosure. Full disclosure, me, Toddy. I had to be like the biggest Caleb McGarry hater. This side of the Mississippi <laughs> coming into the season, man. Um, I had all kind of criticism for McGarry, man. I, I don't know how many times I called him a bust. I called him all kind of bombs. I said he was more like a third or fourth round talent, and we traded up in the first round to get him, man. I didn't have a whole lot of nice things to say about the guy, man, going into the season, man. I was definitely a Caleb McGeary hater, bro. I'm talking about a big-time Caleb McGeary hater for sure, for sure, for sure. You know, I just thought it was a waste of a first-round pick. Um, but I got to admit, y'all, I got to admit, the boy been balling. Caleb McGeary been balling, dog. <laughs> he been balling. Hey, quickest way to shut me up when it comes to – Falcons players that I criticize is just go out there and play. I ain't going to have nothing to say. Nothing to say. That's how you shut me up. You just go out there and play. So this whole year, man, Caleb been balling. I ain't had nothing but good things to say about him. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, going into the season, I was the biggest McGarry hater. But I'm one of the people I'm going to always give credit when credit is due. Caleb is due credit. Uh, that joker been balling, bro. I'm talking about balling, balling, man. Like, run. I ain't got to tell y'all about it. Run blocking. This year, he been one of the best run blocking tackles in the entire NFL. This year, he been one of the best run blocking tackles in the entire NFL. Pass blocking has got a lot better, also. Now, of course, the pass blocking isn't as good as the run blocking, but. Pass blocking has been, I'll say, pretty good also this year as well. Well past satisfactory. You know what I'm saying? So Caleb McGeary. And I titled the video, Is He on the Verge of Getting $70 million from the Falcons? That's what we're going to talk about today. Is Caleb McGeary on the verge of getting $70 million from the Atlanta Falcons? Man, because as we all know, Caleb McGarry signed in the first round along with, well, excuse me, drafted in the first line, first round along with Chris Lindstrom. Now, the Falcons did not pick up Caleb McGarry's fifth-year option. Of course, they picked up Lindstrom's fifth-year option. But McGarry, um, he had been playing bad his first couple years. He had been struggling. Um getting the grasp of the NFL. So the Falcons, they were like, man, we're not going to pick up this fifth-year option for this guy. You probably won't even be here past this year. So the Falcons declined to pick up his fifth-year option, and um, maybe that, maybe he took that as some type of slight or some type of disrespect, and it just that, that light bulb went off. Bam! Like, okay, Atlanta Falcons, y'all don't got faith in me? You gave him a tag team partner, Chris Lynch, my fifth year option. Y'all ain't got faith in me? I'm going to show y'all. So what McGarry did, man, um, this past offseason, he obviously worked on his crowd, got in the gym, and, I mean, when, when he came to count, he looked like a monster, man. He looked like a monster. He came into camp looking like Lou Ferrigno. I mean, he looked like a straight-up monster, man. 
You know, look at him. He looked like a monster. You know, so he got in that gym, man, and started working out and came in shape. And I'm going to be honest, like, the first time I saw this picture, I still was hating on it. I'm like, man, bump that. It shouldn't even take all that. You know, it shouldn't take us. It shouldn't take the Falcons not picking up your fifth year option for you to take all season conditioning serious, man. Bump all that. As soon as soon as this year over, get rid of Caleb with Gary, man. You know, bump all. I don't care how you look right now. Bump all that. But you know, he he obviously let that fuel him, man, and he he got in the gym, worked on his craft, and uh, it obviously showed, man. You know, obviously show. Like I said, he looked like Lou Frickno in that picture, man. You know, so um, he really worked hard in the offseason, man. Got toned up, put on a lot of muscle mass. And he just has – he's been wrecking havoc um, this year, man. So, guys, we got a, we got a real um, – I don't want to say dilemma. We got a big decision to make. Because I'm going to tell you, man, like, let me be straight up with you. If you'd ask me this – Six, eight months ago, I said, no, nah, man, you got to let Caleb McGarry walk. We can go for, get a rookie or somebody come get him. But now, shoot, man. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest. As a, card, as, a, as a card carrying member of the Caleb McGarry hate club, <laughs> hey, man, you, you probably gonna have to, we probably need to resign Caleb, bro. We'll probably just have to pay the piper and go ahead and break him off. Pay the pipe and go ahead and break him off, man, because for one, it's not always easy to replace a tackle. As we all know as Falcons fans, especially a tackle that's playing damn good football. A great man bumped that. Caleb is playing great football. For one. For two, you don't want to really break up that continuity on that officer line that, you know. From, from what I gathered, you know, my research, my intel, him and Chris Lindstrom are like best buddies. You know, that's a dog, tag team partner. So you don't, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna break up their relationship. And they playing like best buddies because that duo, that's the best guard tackle duo this year in the NFL. And they both are fairly young. So you don't wanna let, McGarry go, and then now you got to go fill a hole in the draft, or now you got to go try to find somebody in free agency. And even if you go find, if you if you decide to draft somebody to go the cheaper route, as we know, guys, there's no guarantee that the tackle that you draft, even if you draft them in the top ten, there's no guarantee he's gonna work out. Tackle is a very difficult position to find a, a quality player. So I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, I've always been skeptical. Of paying guys who 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 play great or play excellent during a contract year, because sometimes those guys like that, they get the money and they revert back to their old selves. So I've always been skeptical skeptical of that, because I'm you know as we all know this is Caleb mm -hmm. McGarry contract year and now he's he's playing like a Pro Bowl slash All Pro tackle, but I'm willing to roll the dice. You know, I hope I don't crap out. So I'm, I'm, I think it's probably gonna be in our best interest, y'all, to go ahead and give him that contract, man. To go ahead and give him that contract. I think that's gonna probably be in our best interest, and just hope that he continues to play like he's played this year because he's played some, some great football for us, man. He's played some great football for us. Um, let's look at some, let's look at some data here. As we're gonna now uh, look at his PFF grade right now at this current time, we're gonna look at Caleb's PFF grade. Um, right now, we can see he has played 776 snaps, which is the 23rd most for a tackle. He's only had three penalties, y'all. Excuse me, he's only got three penalties this year. That's 55th amongst tackles in the NFL, which is great. Another thing here, he's only only surrendered four sacks. 21st in the NFL amongst tackles. That's pretty good, too. Uh, we already know he's a great run blocker, pass blocker. You know, he's not as good there, but he's, you know, still fairly good this season. And, again, he's only giving up four sacks. So he's probably on pace to give up probably about five sacks. I'm going to guess six at the very most, 
or he may not give up any more sacks this year. He may finish the season off with only uh, four sacks. Look at his overall grade, 84.3. That's fantastic. 84.3, that's fantastic. 84.3, y'all. That is fantastic for McGarry, man. You, That's what you want right there from your tackle, bro, 84.3. Now let's look at how he performed when he first came in the league. This is his rookie season right here. As you can see, he had a 53 PFF grade, terrible. Um, and also his rookie year, he allowed 13 quarterback sacks. <laughs> he was probably the worst tackle in the NFL his rookie, his rookie year. He allowed 13 sacks, had a PFF grade of 53. That is terrible. And let's go to his sophomore season, which would have been 2020. As you can see, he did improve. He went, he, his PFF grade went up about 64 mm -hmm. points, and he brought those sacks down too. He only allowed four sacks his sophomore year. So as you see right here, allowed four sacks. PFF grade went to 64.3. Now let's look at the third season, which was, of course, Matt Ryan's final season in Atlanta. PFF grade dropped just slightly to 62.8. This was not a good season for Caleb. Uh, again, he allowed a whole bunch of sacks, finished second amongst tackles, and, and sacks allowed it. He allowed nine sacks last year, 62.8 PFF grade. You know, so those first three seasons, which made me a big Caleb McGeary hater, I did not want him in Atlanta any longer than his rookie contract, but he really came along. Again, this is 2022, PFF grade 84.3, guys, and only four sacks allowed. 84.3 and only four sacks allowed, man. So, um, you know, that's that's a, a big reason I want to keep the guy amongst the other reasons that I've already mentioned to you guys. It's, it's just hard, man, to, to go out there and, and find, you know, ample uh, tackles. And then, you know, we, you know, we got a rookie quarterback right now, man. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to be playing. You don't want to have a rookie quarterback and then you ain't got a sufficient offensive line to protect him and that, you know, you get in that, you start at musical chairs with a bad offensive line again, man. And now rookie quarterback, now you got all other kind of problems that going to trickle down and, and associate themselves with that. So that's, again, that's another reason that I really want to keep him, man. You know, I don't, I don't even want to let him get the free agency. And now this is the um, most recent PFF, Ratings right here. Uh, see if I blow it up a little bit more. But this is the most recent PFF ratings. And as you can see, Caleb McGarry is the uh, eighth best officer tackle in the NFL, according to PFF. Eighth best offensive tackle in the NFL, according to PFF. You know, so glad to see it. Glad to see it from Big Caleb, man. I, I'm be honest, I never thought I would see it <laughs> uh, this time last year, but uh, he he's play, he, man, he's just playing some great football, man. He is just playing some great, fantastic football for the Falcons. So I know y'all probably wonder, like, well, Tidy, where you get seventy million from? You know, you ain't the general manager. Your name ain't Font, no. And you are correct. You're absolutely correct, y'all. Where I'm getting that number from is um based off the market value that I got from Spot Track. And uh they're they're pretty reliable. They're definitely a, a site um that I refer to quite often. And they got his uh calculated market value right at about 70 million over um four seasons. And give me a second, I'm actually gonna bring that up and uh that way we can look at that as well. But they pretty much saying that his current market value is a, a four-year deal, and he would be paid just under $71 million total for the contract. And it, trust me, I know that's a lot of money, but um, I already explained, guys, why I just don't want to take that risk um, of trying to find another tackle. But as you can see right here, this is Caleb McGarry we're looking at. SpyTrack has his uh, average annual salary at $17.7 million, as we can see right there. 
And that would put him a four-year deal, right about 70, right? We'll, we'll just call it 71 million. Again, average salary of 17.7 .7 million per year. That would make him the 69th highest paid NFL player. And it actually would put him 12th amongst tackles. So if we can sign him to somewhere, you know, around this price range, he's not even top top 10 in, 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 in the tackles as, as far as what tackles make uh, in the NFL. It is a lot of money. It's definitely a lot of money. But like I say, y'all, I'm, I'm willing um, to roll the dice <laughs> on this one, man. I, I don't want to get into that musical chairs amongst tackles again. Um, so, yeah, he would be making about $71 million over four years, and that's what we would pay him. And, uh, of course, you know, Chris Lindstrom is in his fifth year option. So now this is the thing too. Now, if if you do, <laughs> if we do um, extend McGarry in the offseason, Lister might feel some kind of way. Lister might be like, "Hey, I've been balling since the first snap of my rookie year. This 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 guy just started balling. How you gonna pay him before me?" <laughs> you know. So what I'm trying to say is, if we do extend McGarry. You, you're probably going to have to bypass Lindstrom's fifth year option and just get him a brand new four year, five year extension. Just being real, you know, because it, it would look real funny style <laughs> to extend McGarry, who didn't get a fifth year option, but you make Lindstrom play out the fifth year option. And Lindstrom, by far, has been way more effective since they've been in Atlanta. So, um, that's the thing. You're probably going to have to pay them both in the same offseason, which is cool. We're going to have the money. You know, uh, y'all know we, we talked about the salary cap a lot. We're probably, if, if we keep, if we cut Mariota, which I'm thinking we might, we probably will go into the new fiscal year with about 90 million, around $90 million of available uh, salary cap space. Um, so we can definitely afford to pay them both. And, and by extending McGarry, that's probably what we'd end up having to do. But, you know, I, I'd rather do that, y'all, than just, you know, go back to them days where we don't know what's going to be going on with the officer line. I'd just rather go ahead and pay them and, and, and just be done with it. What we're looking at now, we're looking at the highest paid tackles in the NFL. You got Trent Williams at number one. Um, you got Green Bay's tackle, uh, David. I'm not going to even butcher his last name, but he's at 23 million. Laramie Tunzel is at 22. Uh, Ronnie Staley is at 19.7 million. And uh, Ainks tackle rounds out the top five at 19.2 million. Now, some people may say, well, you know what? Since he's only had this one great year, I don't want to take the risk of committing myself to a four-year contract upwards at $70 million. Let's just franchise tag him, you know? And now this is the thing when you franchise tag him. What's, what, what goes on when you franchise tag a player? You got to pay that player the, the overall average of the top five at his position. And we just went over the top five at his position. What they make? $23 million, $23 million, $22 million, $20 million, $19.2 million. So you take that those top fives and you come to an average, and that's what you're going to have to end up paying McGarry if you do franchise tag him. Now, I went ahead and did the math. That will be about $21 million for one year. $21 million for a one-year franchise tag. I don't think that would be the best solution because, again, now you're paying him over what the market value says he's worth, even though it's only going to be for one year, but that really would hurt the salary cap, because now that $21 million, instead of kind of being broken up, now that's just a $21 million hard cap hit going into next year. Um, so I would rather just go ahead and extend him, uh, roll the dice with McGarry, hope he continues to play good football. Um, and, and and I got a, I kind of got this feeling that that he will, you know. And then you the, the benefit of it, you got him playing uh, uh, alongside Chris Lindstrom again, and we all know how great Chris Lindstrom is. So uh, closing this out, man, I said, hey, man, pay the piper.
Go ahead and pay McGarry. Don't let him go into free agency, you know, because, uh, again, if he goes into free agency, now there's another position you got to feel would a rookie quarterback or, well, a young quarterback going into next season if uh, Ritter is still the, the, the starter going into 2023. I just don't want to go through that, those musical chairs again. Officer line is finally looking good. Got one of the, got arguably the best run blocking officer line in the game. We got a above average pass blocking officer line uh, in, in the NFL. And as far as Jake Matthews goes, you know, he's making about $19 million a year. After the 20, 2023 season, depending on how Jake is playing, he may no longer be on this team. So that'll be a little more cap leap that you could get you know, after the 2023 season. But in closing, guys, hey, coming from a, a card-carrying member of the Mc Caleb McGarry Hate Club, re-signing, man. Terry Fontenot, cut the check, man. Cut the check. Again, that way we ain't got to worry about that. We can spend a draft pick on, on, on defense or another position. We ain't got to worry about going to free agency, overpaying for somebody who we don't really know how they're going to jail with this team. Looks like this officer line has finally developed some chemistry. So, hey, keep it going. Keep it going. But, y'all, tell me what you think. Do you sign Caleb McGarry to like a $70 million deal over four years, or do you let him walk and deal with the repercussions in the offseason? I want to know y'all thoughts, man. Y'all know how we do it in the, in the comments, man. Comment. Tell me what you think. Resigning or let him walk. Y'all know me. I'm always in the comment section. So, hey, let's talk about it, man. Let's chop it up in the comment section. Let's chop it up. Uh, so I'm going to close out, man. And uh, like I always say, man, hey, I will see you the next time I see you. Peace.